This is the Tube by Luke's Lab. It's one of the highest performing 3D printer hot ends out there. We're gonna cut this thing in half and take a look at the crazy engineering that makes this thing work. Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and today we're chopping the tube. So before we cut this thing in half, I wanna check out the flow rate of it. This is the tube conduct, and unlike a regular 3D printer hot end, there's no real heat sink. It's meant to actually sink heat out of this aluminum plate here, and what that means is I can't just 3D print something and expect it to work out. It would actually melt the plastic. So I decided we should use wire EDM to make a full metal heat sink out of some three millimeter aluminum. So coming close into the wire tool here, you can see that there's something different about the top of it. I actually added a barbed fitting there to make flushing easier, and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that. So here at the barbed fitting, I've actually dropped the requirement for a four millimeter PTFE tube. So just like normal, the flushing starts here at the barb connection, and it goes all the way down through the tensioner body to the flushing cap itself. Now here at the flushing cap, you can see a little bit of a print artifact. That's because I added an O-ring to the assembly, and I didn't have a small enough O-ring on hand, so I just used what I had. You can also see here, I've added a way to draw our dielectric out of the vat. This is just a little tube that goes down into the vat and pulls dielectric out to a pump that we have mounted on the side of the table. This is a 12 volt, 100 PSI RV pump. And with that explained, we're gonna take our piece of metal and we're gonna put it into the vat. We're just gonna tighten down these screws and make sure that everything is well situated. And that looks pretty good. I'll then connect the metal to the circuit. And from here, we can fill up the machining vat with dielectric, connect our pumps and run our cut. Hey, it's Cooper from the editing room, and I wanted to talk about this cut a little bit. I was gonna do the movie magic thing where, you know, like, oh, it came out perfectly first try, you know? But it didn't come out perfectly. It came out very imperfectly. It, it didn't really come out at all. In fact, I, I made a lot of mistakes, actually. I have a bunch of stuff here where I couldn't get it to finish the cut. And the fact of the matter is my MCU kept disconnecting, so Clipper failed over and over again when I was going through this, and I couldn't figure out why until eventually it hit me. Wait a minute, I'm using a six foot antenna as my communications cable in a high EMI environment. Of course that's not gonna work. Of course it's gonna cause interference. So I ended up switching to a much shorter cable and I kind of reoriented where I had the power core facing. I moved it to the back of the table behind the ender over here. And I have the power cables kind of tucked into the side, redirect where I kind of thought the EMI was going. And then this cut finally finished. I think it's probably better that I say something about it as opposed to just letting it go and be like, hey, this is a perfect cut, because it wasn't. And I eventually did get to a good cut, which you're gonna see, but there's a lot of problems that you can run into with EDM, and I think a lot of people aren't really gonna be prepared for that coming from 3D printing. So, just wanna say that, uh, let's move on with the video. And there we go. We've now got the part cut out of solid aluminum, and we're ready to bend it and turn it into our mount for the tube for the flow demonstration. This, is an arbor press. So you've seen these before, I guarantee most of you have probably seen these before. This is what's going to bend our metal. So we just take it and put it in here and then we kind of push it wrong, wrong. Not gonna do that, <laughs> I dropped the part. The, the other thing I made for this, and let me show you if I could find them, are these. I made a ram that goes onto the arbor press right up here, it's a shaped ram, and I made this. It's a little, bending jig and it has an action to it. So we have uh, motion on this. We'll use the ram itself to go in and make the bend that we require based on our CAD. Now there's one more thing we're gonna have to do with this. We're going to have to anneal this aluminum. This comes in a T6 state. That's a hardened state. So if I try to bend this, I'll show you some of the failures I've had. I will break it immediately. It's just gonna snap and shear apart. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys how we can anneal some aluminum. Unlike different materials, you actually anneal aluminum by heating it up and then you go and you quench it rapidly. So if you did that with something like a high carbon steel, it would be glass hard. It would shatter once you hit it. So you can see here on the part, I've only marked off the section where I actually want to anneal the metal, because that's where the bend is gonna be occurring. I have this water, because I'm going to need to quench the aluminum after the black coating here on the aluminum starts to disappear. And you're gonna see real quick what that looks like. And we're gonna to try to evenly heat this whole black section. You see that Sharpie starting to disappear on the surface there? 
I'm gonna keep on heating it until it mostly goes away. Check that out, that Sharpie's basically gone. So let's try it. Can't even see where the Sharpie was anymore. And that means that ideally this piece of metal is ready for bending. So let's try it out. We're gonna go ahead and put our bending jig right here with that nice little action on there. Just have to make sure that my metal part is centered here. See if I can't get that right. What do you know? Part's bent. Great. This part's actually looking pretty good. So let's get our tube on here and we'll do a flow rate test. Here we have our tube connected to this little test stand I put together, and I'm gonna just try to feed this through by hand as fast as I can. I expect that the tube is probably gonna outrun me. I've seen this thing in action as far as just being on other machines, and this is one serious hot end. It's starting to go through. Yeah, look at that. I don't know why I thought I'd be able to push this a lot faster than I actually can. Oh no, there we go. I think I might just not have been at a high enough temperature, frankly. It doesn't really seem to be a limit to how much filament I can push through here. This is, this is crazy. Look at that. This thing is just dumping heat into the filament here. We should be able to actually melt some of this plastic on that because that's the conduct right there. It doesn't really wanna melt. I mean, that part's hot. That's to the point where it's beginning to cause me pain. It's at least 50 C on here, but we're, you know, 250 C plus in here, maybe even closer to 300. That really speaks to the incredible efficiency of the uh, titanium heat break that we're gonna take a look at real soon here. That is actually crazy. That level of heat transfer was blocked by that, that heat break. And the, the flow of this thing is absolutely insane. I mean, even just extruding it by hand like that, where I'm, I'm just pushing it down, I don't have that force really well aligned with the filament like an extruder would give you, I'm able to get these huge, huge amounts of polymer out through there. I'm just I'm really impressed by this thing. And uh, I think it's time that we cut it open and see how it works. So let's get cutting. And that cut was something else. I mean, honestly, I've never cut a piece of material that was this difficult to actually EDM machine. We're gonna take a look now at the engineering and the material choices that go into this, because that's really what FDM hot ends are all about. It's about material choices that make them work really well or make them work really poorly. So we're gonna take a look at this hot end starting at the conduction plate on the back side. You can see this is just a turned aluminum piece and that's you know not as thermally conductive as something like the copper that we see up here, but it still is gonna do a really good job of transferring the heat post heat break or pre-heat break off to the machine that you're using, which is why earlier we made that aluminum piece for actually holding on to this hot end. I'm really thankful that every fastener on the tube is uh, three or four stainless with the Torx head. That makes it a lot easier to work on this. You don't have to worry about stripping out those heads with the uh, hex bit of like an Allen key. And while we're here, we might as well talk about the cage. This is a titanium tube that's been milled out as sort of like a whole heat break body. Any of the uh, thermal transfer that goes from the copper heat block to the titanium here is gonna be significantly hampered from getting up higher to the conduction plate at the top by these thin sections of titanium. You know, titanium itself has a really poor thermal conductivity, so that makes it a great choice for this kind of cage material. Moving on to the heat break here, you can see that it almost has a brass color in there, and uh, I'm gonna show you the other half of this just to kind of show off that brass color a little bit better. You can see that it's got that yellowish color to it. I initially thought this was brass, but I asked Luke from Luke's lab, and he let me know that this is actually titanium with a nitride coating on it. 
And that immediately, to me, makes this a much better heat break because again, you can make use of that really, really good thermal property in titanium or maybe really, really bad thermal property in titanium. But still for a heat break, that titanium is going to be a much better choice right here. And that kind of goes along with what I experienced when I was actually forcing filament through here. Down in here in the heat block, it was hot enough where it was actually starting to burn the ASA that I was putting through there. But up here on the conduction plate, I could just about touch it without feeling pain. That means it was only a little over 50 C, whereas in here it might have been up to 300 C. So that titanium heat break is doing a lot of the legwork on this conduction hot end. And whatever cooling solution you have for this conduction plate also doesn't have to work nearly as hard because you're barely transferring any of that heat through the heat break itself. Moving on down to the monster in the room, this is the heat block. And you can see here we have an extremely long recess for that heater cartridge. I think we had a 60 or 80 watt heater cartridge. You don't have to worry about corrosion on your copper itself because you've got that electroless nickel plating on there. So again, good material choices. That seems to be the name of the game with the tube is just materials, materials, materials. So the copper itself obviously has a very high thermal uh, conductivity. Going up here we have our little recess right down by the pretty close to the nozzle for your thermistor and that's again a good choice. You want to try to get as accurate information about the nozzle temperature as possible to that thermistor. So having it placed pretty close by, good choice. Uh, one thing I want to point out before we move any further, these striations are not due to EDM specifically but more to the setup that we had for our EDM process, our wire EDM process. I think that these striations come from the axis of the wire as it went down, moving around like this. And that's probably due to the fact that we have a wire guide at the top of our tool, but not at the bottom. It goes right into that 3D printed idler. And I think that that's what's causing these striations. And you can see here, there's uh, a bit of a secondary cut. This is when I actually had to go in and try to restart the cut after I had to swap out my wire spool and rethread the tool. This is also something that I think I can address with a few changes to the wire tool, like the ones I've made today. A few small changes here or there should do a lot to get rid of the striations that we see in our cut, as well as improve the ease of use as far as threading, rethreading, etc. Something I'm never gonna get tired of is being able to maintain fasteners in the holes that they were actually screwed into. The extremely low forces of wire EDM are what allow that to happen here, here, and here. And to me, that's just the coolest thing. <laughs> I love doing these sections. Moving on to the nozzle, we have here a 1.4 millimeter hardened steel vanadium nozzle from Slice Engineering. This was actually relatively straightforward to cut through. There's not a whole lot of cross section there. And you have a relatively large orifice in the middle of that piece of metal. That reduces the cross section and makes it a bit easier to cut through. And speaking of this vanadium nozzle from Slice Engineering, I actually have something else coming up that also is going to have a vanadium nozzle in it when I cut it. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see the Slice Engineering Mosquito get chopped in half the same way as the tube today. I'd love to take a look at the cross section of that one. Special thanks to Luke's lab for sending us this hot end to check out and kind of destroy, frankly. You know, overall I feel bad destroying a hot end like this, but it's for science, so that's good. I guess. If you like these kind of cross sections and you want to see more Wire ADM, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.